Hey there. So this is just meant to be a little bit of a productivity rant for you. I have no script. I don't know what I'm gonna say outside of a few things that I wanna cover today. But today I wanna talk about this idea of um, getting things done in general. And I get asked a lot uh, for context. I make a number of podcasts. I've been making Lore, uh, which is at lorepodcast.com for over nine years now. I think we've just crossed like 275, you know, full from scratch episodes between Lore and Lore Legends. Um, there's even more content on Patreon that we make for people. It's it's a lot of work. You know, I have a, a team of researchers and uh, writers, and we all work really hard to make this show and keep it going. Um, and there are other shows too. You know, Cabinet of Curiosities has been out for over five years at this point. I think, you know, we're quickly approaching like our 600th episode, which um, is a lot of content. It comes out twice a week, so that that does help. Um, but there's also that's just weird, you know, that we we make and put out on a weekly basis on Fridays. And then I've got this little side project where I'm reading essentially bedtime fairy tale stories on. Uh, on Patreon only, not putting it out as a normal podcast because I want to keep it distraction free. Um, and so it needs that uh, community support to, to make it a thing. And I'll do that for as long as I feel like it's, it's, it's working out for everybody. Um, needless to say, that's a lot of stuff that we make. And I've got a team at iHeart that works on fiction projects for me and, you know, consumed um, my second f- like full scripted, full cast season um, long uh, fiction supernatural thriller is is nearing the end of its um, run. And uh, there's another one that's been scripted that is um, kind of in pre-production. And so the common question I've gotten for years and years and years from people is, Aaron, how in the world do you do all of the stuff that you do? And um, I can give sarcastic answers. I can tell you that you drink a lot of coffee and tea, um, that you don't sleep much. Um, though, to be honest, I'm in bed at like 9.30 every night and I am up at six o'clock in the morning. So I, I get really good sleep. Maybe that's a secret there. Um, I don't know. I, I don't think that you have to work like 25 hours a day, like the, all of the entrepreneurial bros on social media tell you that you're supposed to do. I, you know, just work normal hours. I am at my desk by like 6.45 in the morning. Uh, and I'm there until usually about 5.30 in the evening. Um, so I, I put in some long days. That's part of what helps me get things done. But a big part of what helps me get things done is capturing the tasks that I have to do and managing those tasks in a way that makes sense for me. Now, you're going to find a ton of videos online, um, blogs, books, all sorts of resources that will tell you that here's the way you're supposed to do it. And I don't really think that that applies. I, I think that you should read them, listen to them, watch them, and learn what the options are. But at the end of the day, you need to kind of hack together a system that works for you. You know, it, it, based on what sort of a work life do you have? Are you at a desk all day or are you up and walking around all day? Do you have a ton of distractions or are you completely distraction-free? The, there are some core things here though that I think that probably apply to all systems. One of the biggest ones is just capturing tasks. You're going to think of something at some point in the day. You're going to think, oh, I need to make sure that I do that because it's due at a certain point in the future. Um, You have to capture that task. It's in your head. Um, If you are like me of a certain age, you know that about five minutes later, you won't remember what that thing was and you'll spend the next 10 minutes trying to remember, what was that thing I wanted to do? You've got to capture it when it pops into your head. I've gone through phases in my life. I went through a field notes notebook phase. It's a little pocket notebook, about three and a half by five that pops into your pocket. I I kept a little tiny, um, I think they're Fisher space pens because they write at all sorts of different angles, uh, clipped to my field notes book and I kept that in a pocket. I don't like to have stuff in my pockets these days, so that's not a thing, but it allowed me to have a little notebook where I could quickly jot down the ideas. I could outline stuff. I could could write out, you know, a, a marketing phrase or the intro sentence to a new section of a podcast. I could jot that down in the notebook and, and capture it instantly. The idea is you're capturing it, right? You're, you're, you're getting it into a place where you can no longer lose it. Um, it you're, you're taking a bird in the wild and you're putting it in a cage and now you have it and you can do what you were going to do with it. So um, I had a notebook phase. Um, I, I, I've got some things that I've, I've tossed down here for myself. 
Um, I've gone through note card phases, which still are at my desk. Um, a cool one is uh, these, um, you see how reflective they are? These are whiteboard note cards. They're flexible, um, but you use a, a whiteboard marker and you can write on these. And then when you're done with something, you can actually wipe it off with an eraser, which is really cool. So I, I keep some of these laying around. Um, if I know that I'm gonna use like a ton of cards for a certain thing um, in one instance, I might say to myself, well, rather than waste a bunch of cards, um, why don't I just use a bunch of, you know, erasable whiteboard cards? I think I got a pack of like a hundred of them for 10 bucks or something on Amazon. Um, and because I'm not in the affiliate link business, you can just go on Amazon and search this up yourself and, and find it. There's, there's a ton of people who make them. So um, index cards that are whiteboard material. Super smart idea, actually. I think it's a really clever idea. Um, there's also just plain old index cards. I prefer uh, index cards from a company called Baron Fig. These are, I can't know, I, I can't tell if you can see. Um, they are, ooh, it will focus. They're blank on one side and when you turn them over, they've got like a dot grid on the other side, which is, if you if you like straight lines, if you like a little bit of order or something to guide you um, for maybe drawing checkboxes, I personally love checkboxes because you can check them off. So I will frequently make lists with checkboxes and check them off. Um, the dot grid portion of these cards really helps you uh, draw those little boxes in, then you can write the task next to it. These are great. I mean, they're cheap. Um, you can find incredibly inexpensive blank, you know, three by five index cards on Amazon for, you know, a couple bucks a pack. Um, Baron Fig, they cost more. They're custom printed. They have these nice rounded corners, which are great. Um, I, I like them and I keep them in a little uh, holder on my desk. I don't remember where the holder came from, um, but it allows, it has a little, it's, it lets me stack them up and then it's got a little slit in the front where I can stand the card that I'm working off of in, in the front of it all. And uh, I like that. It's great. I think it's from, I think it's called analog is probably what it is. And I, I don't remember where to find them. Um, so index cards are great. You can keep them in your pocket too, like a field notes notebook. So if you, if you have that lifestyle or that work style where you are constantly on the move and you're going places, maybe you need, you know, these things tucked in a shirt pocket or in a, a pocket of your jeans. They're going to get bent. They're going to, they're not going to look perfect and beautiful. Um, keep them with a writing utensil with your pencil or a pen. You can stick a golf pencil in your pocket, like no eraser, but you've got something that's nice and small. So index cards are a great option. Um, I have for the last couple of months been using, um, this is called the Sidekick, um, which is made by my buddy Mike Hurley and his company over at Cortex, which is a podcast in a, a company. Um, but it, I like that the cover folds over on this thing and then it's got all these different pages. The pages are great. They, um, they have a dot grid on them. So I didn't want to bump my microphone. Sorry about that. They have a dot grid on them. They also have a little list on the right side. Um, and, uh, you can just kind of do with them what you will. I, I tend to use mine as like a scratch pad for daily work life until it's full. And then I tear off the page. I stick it, um, I stick it in the back and, uh, and yeah. And then I move on to the next blank page. So I don't use it as like, here's this week's page or here's this month's page. I use it till it's full and then I move on. I draw a lot of, it's dot grid. So I draw a lot of you know, check boxes on it and stuff. Um, sometimes I have projects where it's like, I like my ad free episodes for lore. I, I sell those in a sense through Patreon and also through Apple podcasts. And so once a month I need to go and grab an upcoming, you know, four or five or six ad free episodes and I need to upload them, copy over their, their metadata, get them programmed with the right date, the right episode number. And so I use this list as a place to jot down like, okay, on this session, I am going to, I just did this like an hour ago. I'm going to add, you know, Lore Legends 27, 26 and 27 and the normal Lore 253 and 254. And, and I've written down next to it, its publication date and its episode number. And then I have a checkbox for Patreon and Apple Podcasts. And as I do them, I check them off. And then I just keep using this thing as I, as I do it. Um, I... I have a, a, a daily calendar that I look at, not a daily calendar, a monthly calendar um, that's on a clipboard. I print them off. I go into my calendar app on my Mac. Um, sometimes it's Fantastical. Sometimes it's just the calendar app that comes with your Mac. And I print blank calendars. 
Um, and then I go and I write on them the the month the, of the year, the the date. And I, I can I can look at this and I can tell you um, what episodes are coming out for what shows on what days. When I have completed them and they're ready for publication, I highlight them green so I know that they're done. And if there are major tasks that have to be done during a week, I put those tasks um, on little slips of sticky notes and I stick those to the week. And I know that like today I'm recording some cabinets. I have a reference here of what numbers they are and what episodes they go into, that kind of thing. And when I'm done, I peel those off. I used to save them, but they I was like, well, why? So I just throw them away now. Um, and it's nice to kind of visually see things come off of my monthly calendar, come off of my week. I can look at my week and I can say, the last chunk has been done. Like I can relax now or, what, or whatever it might be. Um, so this this clipboard, it's a landscape clipboard, which, which, whoop, which is uh, really nice for me. I, I stand this up on an easel on my desk and I, I see it all the time. It's, it's in front of me constantly. Um, what else do I use? I, I hope you're noticing a pattern here that I, I use a lot of tools. Um, I've learned that one thing is not, it, it doesn't cover all the bases. Um, it, it's not a unitasker, right? Like index cards can't do all of it for me. It can't have these monthly, weekly tasks for me. They'd be too small, right? I need something bigger. And so I make a system for that. Um, I, you know, I... I I have a notebook that I use for meetings when I'm on a Zoom call or I'm with a you know team meeting with my my eight full time writers, researchers, um, producers. This is called a uh, rocket book, and what I like about this is it kind of answers some of the problems I've had with big notebooks over the years, which is I buy them, I love them, um, and then I get nervous about using them. Also, uh, I have a lot of different categories that I take notes in. I might take notes for. Um, a meeting with my agents at UTA about TV projects. Well, where do I put that in the notebook? Do I do I go halfway through it to a blank spot and start a you know a meeting section or a TV section? Um, what about notes on an upcoming book? Like I've I've got to set up a publishing section in there. And then what happens if I don't use the blank pages in between those sections? It feels like a waste. Um, so what the Rocket Book does for me is that the pages are. Um, there, you can see that they kind of have a reflectiveness to them. They are kind of a plasticky paper and they're made to work with a particular kind of pen that has the eraser on the end of it. And so it writes like a ballpoint pen, but if you make a mistake, you can flip the pen over and you can erase it. And what you can do with these is you can, you can take notes. They're, they're um, spiral bound. You can get different types of templates. This one is just lined, but you can get grid. You can get, you know, things that are designed for task management and stuff. And when you're done, you spray them with water and you wipe it down with a microfiber cloth and everything that you've written is gone. Um, so what I do is I take notes in a meeting and then I, when I'm done, I get my phone out and I, I take a photo of the page inside the files app on my iPhone, um, which scans it in. It lets me drag the corners to make sure that it's fully aligned with the page. Um, I save it with the date that the meeting took place. Um, I have a personal and a work folder. So it depends on what that note had to do with. Um, and then I erase it and I can start fresh. Um, so that's, that's another tool that I use in my arsenal. And, and look, at the end of the day, something digital. This is my iPad mini. It goes everywhere with me. Um, and on the iPad mini, um, I've got a, I've got a paper like screen protector. So it helps me when I'm writing with the pencil, feel like it, um, it's a bit more like a paper, paper like. Um, so that's a screen protector that helps me with stuff. But on here, I have an app called Todoist. Todoist, uh, red icon, three white slashes on it. I pay for a subscription. I have for years and years. Um, and it's on every device I own, my iPhone, my iPad, um, and my computers. Uh, and what I can do with it is I can hit a hotkey on my computer or I can you know, click on the app and click a button and I can instantly capture a task because again, that's what we're, that's what we're talking about. Capturing tasks, right? Um, with Todoist, you can capture a task and then you can tell it, I want that to be categorized into a certain project. You use a hashtag and then the name of the project. You can set a date that you want it to pop up on your list by just typing in a date. You can say next Thursday and it will recognize that, or you can say, uh, July 5th, and it will recognize that. Uh, it's got this natural language recognition, which I like. And then you can prioritize it. You can give it one of three colored flags. 
um, which will sort it. I use my flags. The I think it's red is the most urgent, then orange, and then blue. And I use those to sort of group tasks in chronological order. So if there's some stuff that I want to do, like in the morning, pre-workout and shower, I will put those with red flags. If it's after my workout, but you know, before lunch, I give them orange flags. And then everything after lunch, I give a blue flag. Um, I do some weird stuff with capturing meetings that I have to have. Like if I'm going to do a meeting with somebody as a one-off, I will put it on my to-doist list. I will put it in. I will do a little uh, squiggle line. It's up in the top left corner of the keyboard. It was like, what do they call that? A tilde, I think. Um, and then I type the time. The tilde prevents the natural language recognition from capturing that time and turning it into a timed task because I don't like timed tasks. Um, so I'll put like squiggle 11 a.m. dash meet with, you know, grim and mild team dash. I'll paste in the Zoom link and then I will type in the date of the meeting and categorize it. Like usually meetings is the category for meetings. Um, I know that's wild and, and revolutionary. Um but then I also put it on my calendar with reminders. So I get hit with the reminder. I see it when I'm reviewing my to-do list for the day. Um, I basically have learned that like I have to treat my brain like a toddler and I have to constantly remind it and constantly guide it and build, um, you know, a sort of like guardrail system, like bumper bowling. I really have to guide my brain into, into doing the thing that I needed to do. So I leave reminders everywhere. I take notes for everything. And that is how I get things done. That's That's just... You know, that I have learned who I am as a person. I've learned how my brain functions and I have hacked the system in a sense. I've looked for tools that tick the right boxes. And that's sort of like the collection of tools that I use right now in 2024 to get things done. I'm not emotionally attached to most of them. I will probably always use Todoist because it's a great digital capture tool. But the rest of the stuff, you know, I may come and go with them. I may use that notepad on my desk, the sidekick, um, for a couple of months and then put it away for a while. That's okay. You're not failing at your to-do system. You're not failing at getting things done. You're adapting and evolving. And that's what we have to do as, as humans who have things to do. Um, so I hope this helped. Again, this is an unscripted rant where I'm just telling you stuff that I use to, to get things done. And if there's any takeaway here, I hope it's what we just talked about, that it's okay to experiment. It's okay to set things aside from time to time. It's okay to use multiple getting things done GTD tools at once because not all of them tick all the boxes. You have to cobble together a system that works for you. And that's okay. So um, yeah, if you've got a system that you haven't seen on my list of tools here, if there's a tool that you love, um, drop it in the comments below and, and let me know about it because clearly I like to experiment with new tools and maybe other folks reading the comments will see them and, and be inspired by them as well. I hope you are able to get your head and your hands wrapped around a system that works for helping you manage your, your work life, your, even the tasks at home. I really do hope that this video has helped you feel less guilty about um, maybe the stumbles that you've had along the way uh, and inspired to try some new things that could maybe help you get more stuff done. It's not about working longer hours. I, for me, it's about being smarter about the time that I spend working so that I have time to relax, read a book, play a game. Um, I, I paint miniatures for Warhammer. I, like it's, it's, I don't play Warhammer. I just go down to the my painting room for some therapy and I, I paint. I can do that because I've bought myself time through properly managing my tasks and I hope you can do the same. I'll see you next time. Cheers.